All right, we have already done electrolysis of brine, that is electrolysis of sodium chloride. On similar grounds, we are doing electrolysis of HCl. Brine was concentrated sodium chloride, that is concentrated NaCl. Here we are going to look into different aspects of electrolysis of HCl. Okay, first of all, the dissociation reaction. This is going to occur only in presence of water. This part which is shown, all this part is in absence of water. I'm going to discuss that in a couple of minutes. The first part is this is in presence of water. It is going to split up into H plus and Cl minus ions. That is hydrogen ions and chloride ions. H plus obviously is a positive ion that is a cation. So it is going to go to cathode. Similarly here, chloride Cl is a negative ion that is an ion. Therefore, it is going to go to anode. The first part that I am taking is when no water is present, that is this part. Okay. The first part is hydrogen chloride at room temperature is a gas. Now, this is the basic difference that we are going to take between electrolysis of NaCl and HCl. NaCl, remember, is an ionic compound. While HCl is a covalent compound, there is sharing of electrons between hydrogen atom and chlorine atom. Because both of these are H and Cl, hydrogen and chlorine, both of these are non-metals. So it is a gas at room temperature. So there is no question of dissociation. It means all these things are not going to happen when it is in the gaseous state. Okay. So... The first thing is dry HCl. Gas does not exhibit acidic properties in absence of water. It means this splitting is not going to take place. So basically it is not going to be a conductor of electricity. So there is no question of electrolysis. So electrolysis of this part is not possible only. Okay. Only when dry hydrogen chloride gas, HCl gas, when it is dissolved in water, it gives hydrochloric acid and then it shows acidic properties. So these both things will be applicable only if water is present. If water is not there completely, electrolysis is not possible because it's a covalent compound. It won't conduct electricity at all. So no electrolysis. Then we have electrolysis of dilute solution and concentrated solution. For concentrated solution, uh, for dilute solution, the products are going to be same hydrogen and oxygen as we have done even in NaCl also. This applies to all ionic compounds. Whenever it is dilute solution, you are always going to get hydrogen and oxygen only because that if that other metal which is there, we have to also compare with hydrogen in the activity series. I'm just going to write that part also down. So for dilute solution, we are always going to get hydrogen and oxygen only. Now when it is concentrated, obviously hydrogen, you will have to compare with activity series. If that hydrogen metal is lower, we are always going to get hydrogen gas. And we are going to get chlorine gas. This is the basic difference between electrolysis of NaCl and HCl. Obviously, I'm going, just going to quickly write that part down of uh, the activity series of metals, which is PSC, mazil, and hydrogen comes, could make copper, silver, gold. Okay, uh, could make silver, platinum, and gold. Could make, make is mercury, Hg, silver, platinum, and gold is AU. Okay, so whenever any of these metals are there, and if it is aqueous solution, water is present, hydrogen over here is lower in the activity series. So always I'm going to get for dilute solution or concentrated solution, whatever it may be, even if it is brine. If suppose here, if I'm having NaCl and H2O, 
obviously here this is sodium so i am never going to get sodium whatever the metal may be above hydrogen i am never going to get that metal i am always going to get hydrogen and oxygen only whether it is dilute solution or concentrated solution it does not matter okay now when i am coming to concentrated solution obviously that i have already explained to you over here when the concentrated solution is there then i'm not going to get oxygen gas that is going only going to be the difference otherwise hydrogen gas is always going to be there if that metal is above hydrogen i'm always going to get hydrogen gas in that case okay so that's the difference the next part over here is suppose that metal is below hydrogen which metals are there below hydrogen i'm having copper we are not going to take uh, other examples because we generally don't study electrolysis at this level of those so, so suppose if we are going to have a solution like copper sulfate in that case i'm not going to get hydrogen gas because why copper is a metal which is below hydrogen in the activity series so in that case copper remember is a positive ion cation so it will go at cathode so at cathode these all metals will get deposited when you are having an aqueous solution of it whether it is dilute or it is concentrated okay and of course the other part of this is it is going to depend on the concentration suppose if you are having i'm taking another example copper chloride cucl2 okay i'm taking this example for both dilute as well as concentrated the substance that is going to be formed at cathode is always going to be copper whether it is dilute or it is concentrated why because copper is below hydrogen in the activity series now when the solution is concentrated here chloride ion is there so here i'm going to get chlorine gas if the solution is dilute i'm going to get over here oxygen gas if you have any questions you can ask me okay you can ask me your question can you go up the yeah so your uh, uh, the dilute solution at anode uh, uh, oh minus uh, minus 1 electron it should be it's not one we this uh, this equation is not balanced we are not doing at this level we are not doing the balanced equation of this i can give you that balanced equation also it is four electrons which is giving you uh, water plus oxygen water I, and 2h2 no yeah yeah but at this level uh, we you are not expected to answer that equation therefore we are not doing equation at this particular level later on of course you have you will have to do yes this is correct for all covalent compounds provided that substance should also be soluble in water we have done differences between covalent and ionic compounds also covalent compounds usually will not be soluble in water they will be soluble in organic solvents and they will be not conductor of electricity so there is no question of electrolysis if it is soluble in water then this type of equation will be possible still but at room temperature or without water these electrolysis will not be possible because they will not conduct electricity only and then another similar such example that you can take is h2s hydrogen sulfide this is also a gas it is of course soluble in water but there the reactions are going to be different okay so even if it is hydrogen sulfide if water is not there forget about it electrolysis is not possible and at this level we are not going to answer for dilute and concentrated solutions